Hello. Welcome to Tour de Force Productions. I'm, of course, Derek Force. You know, I've always been interested in the single image. I started photography, incidentally, in 1959. I belonged to a camera club and I enter my work there for uh, appraisal. Don't always do very well, incidentally. But my real interest is in audiovisual. And although I put my pictures on Flickr and Instagram, I find YouTube a much more interesting and productive channel to present my work, particularly as I can mix my photographic skills with sound recording and production. And of course, through YouTube, I am reaching a worldwide audience. And I find that extremely rewarding. YouTube is free to use, but it will cost a lot of time. There is no pro version. But as your channel grows in stature, then certain privileges become available and they include earning money, if you wish, from adverts and having a paying membership. Now, during COVID, I actively promoted and managed my channel. And today it earns me a monthly income and that finance helps me to produce new programs about photography and places to visit in the UK. Whilst it might be your intention and mine to produce programs entirely on photography, the facilities that YouTube offer enable me as a creator through photography express other interests. And mine, of course, is music and the scenery and architecture of the British Isles. I'm able to combine all these elements in walks and tours and this is something that my audience seem to appreciate and also as I used to work with a recording company I can usually find the appropriate music and sounds to go with my productions. So therefore the skills that I can use go way beyond photography. When choosing your photographs for a production, don't make the mistake of putting in all of your award-winning pictures. They won't flow. It'll end up like a catalogue. You need a series of pictures, perhaps especially taken, that will present a flow through the production. I have a stock of over 100,000 images of the UK which I can rely on, but I do take new work. 
and I save the images in the raw file format before converting them to a JPEG. I reduce them down to 1400 uh, width and I shoot always in 4x3 but I crop to 16 times 9 for YouTube production. So when I'm taking pictures then I have to think of two markets, publishing and YouTube but hopefully they can be derived from the same image. Many years ago, I purchased two of these. I think they are AKG microphones. I can't find the name on them. They are made, I see, in Austria. I only use one of these for the voiceover. So, of course, I'm not recording in stereo. Neither am I recording in mono. I save my voice in double mono. That gives depth to my voice and places me center stage in the sound picture. I add natural sounds and music later in Microsoft PowerPoint, but I use Audacity to mix my recordings. Now, Audacity is a fantastic free software that you can download off the internet. It is amazing. I only use what is absolutely necessary, but there's a lot to that program I just simply don't understand. But it has a wonderful noise reduction. So when I record my voice, if there's a bit of noise in the background, it's very easy to get rid of it. I can see a few raised eyebrows when I mentioned Microsoft PowerPoint to produce my shows. The problem with PowerPoint is that it's too easy to produce some kind of production, hence the jibe, death by PowerPoint. If you've got the time and the inclination, there is a lot underneath the bonnet of the program that, and some things that even Microsoft don't tell you about. You can get PowerPoint, it comes in Office of course, so you might already have it and there are versions of PowerPoint not only for Windows but for Apple Mac computers as well and that's what I use for my productions. This looks like my train. Soon I was swapping the skyscrapers of Croydon with the soaring steeple of Chichester Cathedral. Let's look inside. Ah, oh, hang on a minute. Here comes the boss. Better listen. I have arrived at uh, Chichester Cathedral. Thankfully it is open, but I'm having to handhold the camera. But as the EM1 Mark II and the 12-100 Pro lens both have image stabilizers, then there should be no problem in getting sharp images, which I will now show you. When you sign up for YouTube, you have to, of course, abide by their rules, their terms and conditions. They do keep an eye on you. Also, you get access to YouTube Studio, where you can track the progress of your programs. And also, they track on how well you do in terms of appreciation from your audience. Unfortunately, one or two programs slip through the net, which get reported in the press and television. But I don't think I, and I hope you, need worry too much about that. As your channel grows in stature, your audience grows, you get lots of likes and comments, then certain facilities become available to you. The most likely one to come first is adverts. Now, this is completely optional. 
as to whether you have adverts accompanying your programs. But of course you do get a royalty from it. You can choose the type of advert and exclude certain ones, but YouTube actually choose the channel based on your recommendations. And remember, this is entirely optional, but it does contribute to my monthly income. So if you, if you don't like them, if you swear at them, then I'm sorry about that, but it does help to finance future productions. So thank you for watching. The adverts, that is. Hope you carry on looking at my programmes, though. A word or two about comments. I'm sure you would like to hear what your worldwide audience think about your productions. But that facility is optional with each new video you upload. I seem to be reasonably successful. YouTube give you a rating as to what people think about your programmes. My rating, when I last looked, was 99.4%. So who of you are giving me bad reviews? Talking about bad reviews, if somebody says something very uncomplimentary, then that's one thing that the YouTube computers can pick out. They pop it into a special folder. It doesn't get published, but they notify me and ask, what do you want to do about this comment? We don't think it's very appropriate. I started my YouTube channel back in 2013, but I only really got serious about it in 2020 at the start of the pandemic. Creating a successful video that gets a large audience is like composing a hit tune. And when you're successful, you're not quite sure what in the program has engaged that audience. One thing I do know is that programs about gear do get more views, followed shortly behind about technique. Now, I like to talk about music and the scenery and the architecture of the British Isles. That comes some way down the list. Look, I think this is a shame. When you've got the camera of your choice, you know how to use it. Wouldn't you like a few suggestions? If you're going to travel around the UK, wouldn't you like a few suggestions of places to photograph? Sadly, a lot of you out there don't seem to think so. Right, smarten myself up because I'm in church, the church at Bosom Quay. I took the bus from Chichester and I've had a walk by the Bosom Channel. Uh, the weather is a bit mixed at the moment, it's very cloudy, it's raining outside at the moment, but what I am hoping is that the weather will break, we'll get some sunny intervals, High contrast spot meter of the highlights could be very interesting if the weather improves. And at the moment, I don't know whether you can hear it, but I can hear the rain outside. So I think I'll wait a little longer inside the church, which incidentally is a very historic church. It has a very fine Saxon arch and I've taken a picture of it. As anticipated, the sun appeared. When shooting over water, excessive contrast that the camera cannot handle without help is an added problem, resulting in burnt out highlights, lacking detail. It's just a pure white, there's nothing there. As you might expect, I take the opportunity to compare the performance of my channel with others offering similar material. And it's very difficult to judge what works with one but doesn't with somebody else. For example, I see many 
excellent productions about photography and yet they only seem to get, say, a few hundred views. And then you look at something else, again, excellent production, maybe better than mine, but they get thousands of views. And yet you can't really find any rhyme or reason why one would do not so well and the other really excellently. Maybe age and appeal has something to do with it. Now, appeal, I might be able to do something. Uh, I'm not sure about the age factor. One thing you must bear in mind, and this is something in the back of my mind, and I hope I haven't upset you in this program. It takes ages to build up a successful YouTube channel. You can destroy it in seconds by saying the wrong thing. Also, if you're going to make a joke about something, make sure it's about yourself and nobody else. Sometimes, you know, when I make a joke about myself, I get sympathy, actually, from my audience. Look, I think I've told you enough. Uh, I, I, I think that programmes that go on too long, again, do not get the views that might, might deserve. So I'm going to stop now. In fact, I'm losing my voice. I'm stumbling, I'm mumbling my words. So that's a good idea for me to stop. But to wish you well, of course, most importantly, to wish you well, should you decide to create a YouTube channel. I wish you good luck. Ah, hello. Welcome to Tour de Force Productions. I'm, of course, Derek Force, the creator. And here you'll find over 260 productions on traditional photography in our digital age. And the programmes include reviews or experiences, if you like, of Olympus cameras and lenses, techniques, and perhaps most importantly, places to photograph in the UK. In fact, I have just finished a programme about the new Elizabeth line in London. I'm going to show you a trailer, but before I do that, please, if you haven't done so already, become a subscriber. That won't cost you anything. Alternatively, if you wish to support my work, then become a member. You can even, you can even sponsor an entire production if you wish. Anyway, enough of me. Time to show you the trailer. And whilst you're looking at that, I'm going to carry on doing a little bit of research for my next uh, show. See you shortly. I will let you judge the success of my images. Video 2! But my methods are a little unconventional and sometimes considered incorrect, even wrong. Obviously, I have to handhold in the underground, but sharp images at long shutter speeds are not a problem with my EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens, as both have image stabilizers, and there is a separate facility for video stabilization. I spot meter for greater exposure accuracy with an electronic finder. Save the raw and correct any blown out highlights or dense shadows in Adobe Lightroom as well as correcting color balance. You might be surprised to learn that I shoot on program with my personal settings, leaving the camera to sort out exposure which by default will use the shortest shutter speed possible.